Welcome to Mr. Ace Math. This lesson is on the distributive property. Before you begin, you should make sure that you're comfortable with the order of operations, with addition of numbers, and with multiplication of numbers. Very important to make sure that you really get the distributive property. So make sure you're good with those and let's get started. So first of all, what exactly is the distributive property? Well, it comes from the word distribute. And what does the word distribute mean? Well, the word distribute means to give shares or deal out. Let's say this is you, and you're happy. You're happy because you have all this candy all to yourself. But you got three friends who are not so happy. So you decide to distribute your candy amongst your friends evenly. So you've got three friends, one, two, three, and you've got 12 pieces of candy. So each friend is going to get four pieces of candy. Your first friend will get four. That makes your friend happy. Your second friend will get four. That makes that friend happy. And your third friend will also get four candies, which makes that friend happy as well. That's basically what the distributive property does, except it's with numbers and with multiplication. You'll see what I mean in a second. So the distributive property states that you can multiply a sum by 1, multiplying each add-end by the same number, then 2, adding the products. That sounds so horrifically, terribly, agonizingly, painfully difficult. But it's really not that bad. The way most textbooks word it, it seems really tricky, but it's not. Take my word for it. Let's take an example. Let's say we have 5 times 7. So let's break down our 7 into 4 plus 3. Now we could break that number down any way we want. We could have made it 5 and 2, 6 and 1. It doesn't really matter as long as it adds up to 7. So we're going to use the distributive property and instead of multiplying 5 times 7, we're going to multiply 5 times 4 plus 3. So, what we're doing is we're distributing the 5 to each number inside parentheses, starting with the 4. So this will give us 5 times 4. And 5 times 4 is 20. We'll bring down our plus signs here and here. And then we'll distribute 5 to the next number, which is 3. This will give us 5 times 3. And 5 times 3 is 15. And now what we're doing is step 2. We're just going to add the product. So we're just going to add 20 plus 15. And that gives us 35. Now I know what you're probably saying, Mr. Ace, why didn't we just multiply 5 times 7? It's straightforward. We know 5 times 7 is 35. Why do we do all this work? Well, I just used these numbers to give you a simple example. The distributive property is actually very good when we have bigger numbers. For example, let's say we had 6 times 57. Not so easy, is it? But what we can do to make this easier is we can break down this 57 into 50 plus 7. And that's so much easier to do. So instead of 6 times 57, we'll use the distributive property to find our answer. And the first thing we'll do is we'll distribute the 6 to the 50. And that gives us 6 times 50. And 6 times 50 is 300. We'll bring down our plus signs here and here. And then we'll distribute 6 to the next number, which is 7. And that will give us 6 times 7. And 6 times 7 is 42. And now all we have to do is step 2, which is add the products. We just add 300 plus 42. That's pretty simple. That's 342. Much easier than trying to do this 6 times 57 in your head. Let's take another example. 3 times 73. How can we break down one of these numbers that will make the question easier? Well, 3 is already a one digit number. It's pretty simple already. But 73 we can break down into 70 plus 3. 
and then use the distributive property to help us find this answer. So let's distribute. 3 is touching parentheses, so we'll distribute the 3 to the first number, which is 70. That gives us 3 times 70. And that's pretty simple. 3 times 70 is 210. Then we'll bring down our plus signs here and here. And then we'll distribute 3 to our second number. That gives us 3 times 3. And that's pretty simple. 3 times 3 is just 9. And now all we have to do is add the products. We just add the answers that we got. So we've got 210 plus 9. That gives us 219. Again, this is much easier than trying to do 3 times 73 mentally. Here's another example. So here we have 8 times 29. How could I break down one of these numbers so that it's easier to multiply? Well, 8's already a one-digit number, but 29 is a two-digit number, so I could break down 29 into 20 plus 9. That's the easiest way to do it. So let's use the distributive property to find out what 8 times 29 is. So let's take our 8, and we're going to distribute that to 20. That gives us 8 times 20, and 8 times 20 is 160. We'll bring down our plus signs here and here, and then we'll distribute 8 to our second number, which is 9. That will give us 8 times 9, and 8 times 9 is 72. So now all we have to do is step 2, which is add the product. So we'll have 160 plus 72, and that gives us 232. Now, Every example we've done so far, we've had a one-digit number and a two-digit number. But I just want to let you know that it doesn't stop with just two digits. Let's take this example. We have 165 times 4. Well, 4 is a pretty basic number. It's one digit. It's easy to use. But the 165, we could break that down into 100 plus 60 plus 5. That's going to be easier than trying to multiply 165 times 4 mentally. So let's use the distributive property to get this done. So what are we going to do first? Well, we're multiplying everything by 4, so we're distributing the 4. And the first thing we're distributing the 4 to is the 100. It's our first number inside parentheses. And that's going to give us 4 times 100, which is equal to 400. And then we will bring down our plus signs here and here. And then we're already done with the 100, so we'll distribute to our second number, which is 60. And that's going to give us 4 times 60. And 4 times 60 is 240. Then again, we'll bring down our plus signs here and here. And then we still have a number to distribute to. So we're going to distribute the 4 to the 5. And that gives us 4 times 5, and 4 times 5 is just 20. So now I just go to the second step, adding the products. So I just add 400 plus 240 plus 20, and that gives me 660. And adding these numbers up is definitely a lot easier than trying to multiply 165 times 4. And that shows just how useful the distributive property can be. So here's your pause and practice. Just pause and practice. Hit the pause button and when you're done, unpause the video and followed by a 3, 2, 1 countdown, your answers will be displayed. Ready, set, go. So let's take a look at our answers. Number one is 1,006. Number two is 405. Number three is 392. Number four is 1,884. Number five is 1,370. Number six is 272. Number seven 
is 18, and number 8 is 364. So what did we learn from this lesson? The distributive property states you can multiply a sum by 1. Multiplying each addend by the same number, then 2. Adding the products. The distributive property is useful for multiplying larger numbers by a single digit number. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for using Mr. Ace Math. Don't just pass math, ace it.